All right, this is David again, and this is uh, the part one uh, for girls only. Um, let me go back and uh, go over kind of what I want to express. Um, I've mentioned on other uh, videos, I have a master's degree in human services and human behavior, and um, taught a little bit in practicums and other places to um, university level people. And what I wanted to cover um, today, I do have a part two to this particular video. And as part one, I'd like to uh, speak to uh, girls. And uh, I've raised uh, seven girls, and um, I've been married to five. Uh, so I'm somewhat qualified, and I also have a degree. And my master's level thesis was uh, human attraction, why you men uh, attract to women and why do women become attracted to men. And I kind of wanted to do a um, serious, but also um, informative video. Being a girl, a woman, today in today's society is much more complex than 100, 200 years ago. 200 years ago, you're 12 years old, you go out in the field, you pick the tomatoes, you come in, and uh, you hope someday some boy, boy will want to marry you. Boy, I'll tell you, in 2011 and 12 here, um, to be female, with so many choices and so many uh, previous um, prejudices. Prejudices that you couldn't vote, uh, that you were chattel, which means property. Uh, it used to be in the United States, it followed uh, European law, that if a man divorced a woman, he took the kids automatically and everything, and you basically were destitute. Of course, that's changed around a lot uh, in evolution over the last couple hundred years. Let me speak specifically to the girls that are Mormon and the girls that are thinking of becoming Mormons or girls that are uh, going to marry a return missionary or at BYU, um, I'm picking up more and more, and I'm not quite sure why, uh, female readership uh, is, is pushing 25% now. <laughs> In Utah, it was only 1%, and I think that's why I'm doing the video. You seem to be treated a little bit differently in the Mormon church than in the uh, country at large. Um, you're supposed to be, of course, a virgin and chased all the way up to uh, marriage and then run off and find a buff BYU uh, missionary that just got home. And uh, you marry in the temple and you're, you're happy ever after. Well, it doesn't really <laughs> work that way. Maybe for one or two, okay, you can grab the aberrations and you can grab the exceptions and if you want to live on those, that's fine. But let me give you, if I can, the uh, perspective from a man. Uh, first of all, um, men and women are not only biologically different, but they're extremely emotionally different. And um, men, um, we think about uh, sexual things every six to ten seconds. Uh, you think about it every six to ten years, or maybe hours, I don't know. But um, we are certainly much more sexually driven because of hormones than you are. Um, men uh, know enough to say to you, oh, I love you, I love you, I'll marry you. Uh, if you get in trouble, uh, I'll take care of you and the baby. You know, they'll say anything to get your panties off. They'll say anything. And, of course, you want to be liked, you want to be popular, you want to be desirable. That's part of being a woman. And your instinct wants you to have a baby or two, uh, seven or eight, maybe your instinct isn't that much, hopefully. Um, and so, um, you sometimes let your, um, your heart and your feelings guide your decisions. Well, in romance and in marriage, that's probably the very, very worst thing you can do. Of course, we want to be attracted to our mates and our boyfriends, and of course we want to be desirable. But at what expense? At what expense? Now, I'm trying to get you off of the, uh, uh, well, the, let me not use that terminology. Um, I'm trying to help you maybe see the difference between a burning in your, in your bosom and feelings compared to just plain damn common sense. Now, if a guy has got, you know, three earrings in his ears and a, a nose ring and a mohawk and tattoos down both sides of his arms and, uh, you know, he's got a sixth grade education and he rides a bike and he says, I love you, I love you, I love you, I'll really get a job and I'll really take care of you someday. 
Now, of course, that's an exaggeration. Hopefully, you've got enough common sense to see the principle, to see the principle. Not the exact example I gave, but the principle. Look, my um, education at, at my thesis level, I did original research in uh, attraction. What makes men attracted to women and vice versa. And here's what I found. Uh, David Buss, B-U-S-S, -S, was the pioneer in this research. And um, my um, research backed up exactly what he said. And it is this. Women look for not especially the buff guy and not especially the football player, but they look for security. They're looking for someone who will care for them, protect them, and their posterity and children. She is a real nester by nature, and uh, she wants those children uh, cared for. Well, that's important to a woman. That's why sometimes uh, you see the most beautiful women in the world married to some fat, ugly, bald, excuse me, you know, not me, but others uh, that are young, uh, and you wonder, what the hell, how did he get her? Well, it's like Hinckley told you. It's a lie. It's a lie. Hinckley, the hangster, said to you, marry a man, not that because you're in love with him, or for love, but uh, that one will take you to the celestial kingdom. Well, that was great news to the fat, ugly, stupid guys. The nerds go, hey, Hinckley's a prophet. Well, at your expense, at your expense, because follow the prophet. I hope they call me on a mission. You've been brainwashed into thinking that you're a baby machine and that all you need is someone to guide that machine into the grand heavens and that you will have worlds of your own and be queen uh, of the universes and pregnant 24-7 for eternity. Now think about it. Is that a man's idea of, of eternity or is it a woman's idea? Well, the women I've met, it's not their idea of eternity. Uh, I've seen uh, many pregnant women in my own life because I've been married. And I've seen the birth of uh, 12, uh, 11 of my children. That doesn't kind of look like fun to me. It really doesn't. Now, of course, you know, you love the baby, and after it's there for two or three hours, you go, hey, the pain was nothing. But, uh, boy, when you're watching the pain, it is something. I'm just trying to be a voice of warning and a voice of prudence and wisdom. As a female, there is no punishment for having a vagina. There is no punishment. And how this society, and men especially, uh, make fun of you or um, degrade you or make you a second-class citizen, some of that's your own fault because you let it happen. Now, let me just say one quick thing here on uh, domestic abuse. It's not uncommon. Now, I'm not going to say it's a majority. I'm going to say it's uncommon. Not, I'm sorry, not uncommon for boys to come home from their missions. And, of course, they've been away from girls now 10 years. If they went on a mission as a virgin, now they've come back from 12 years old to 22. They've been a virgin for 22 years. Um, you know, I'm not too sure they're going to care what you look like as care as much as the equipment you're wearing. Be careful. A lot of those kinds of missionaries will come home and be abusive. And let me, now I'm an expert on this, okay? The first time that somebody in a marital relationship slaps you, uh, pushes you over the couch, or um, you know, throws you down on the ground, you are to call 911. The policies and the procedures in the United States especially are well laid out. And we don't go for that crap. If someone rips the phone off the wall where you can't call, if someone blocks the door so you can't leave the house, uh, if someone steals the keys where it's your car and you can't get home and terrorizes you, that's against the law. Now, if you're a female and you're in the Mormon church, you're taught to just shut your mouth. Shut your mouth and, and bow your head and say yes. And I don't want to get my husband in trouble. Well, if you become an abused spouse, then that's your problem, isn't it? The laws are there and the... Uh, practices and procedures are present for you to be protected. If you don't want to be protected and you want to fantasize that, oh, he's going to change, oh, he promised he wasn't going to drink anymore, oh, he promised he wasn't going to take drugs, oh, he promised that he wasn't going to you know, do this or that, hey, that's your life. I'm just warning you that my experience has been that if you let anybody abuse you, um, they're going to continue and it will get worse. It's that simple. If you're that desperate, hey, be beat up. 
It doesn't hurt me. It doesn't hurt me at all. So let me um, just kind of uh, bring all of this together that if you're a Mormon girl, you're in seminary or you're in uh, marriage uh, ages and you're at BYU or other universities, you need to take some time and you need to do some investigating on what kind of a human being uh, this man is. Take a look at the way he treats his mother. That is a very strong indicator of how he feels about women and uh, how he treats or will treat women historically. Um, also take a look at his uh, father and how punitive or abusive or kind and understanding that father was. Those are real strong indicators of how a child comes out of a family. Um, also take a look and have talks. I mean, you need to talk and talk and talk to know this person, to be able to say, uh, this is my feelings on domestic abuse. If you hit me or slap me, the, once, just once, I will call the police and you will be in an anger management class and you will be in psychological counseling because no one hits me. It's that simple. Do you understand that and do you agree to that and then you stick with it and you'll never be abused. Some of these return missionaries can be very abusive and very hurtful and because you have faith in the church and you're a woman and you know you have two of his kids, you just let him beat the crap out of you. Hey, that's your fault. That's, that's uh, Ron um, White said it best, uh, there, you can't fix stupid. I can't fix stupid, neither can you. If you let people abuse you, then that's going to continue to go on and uh, bullies will continue to bully you. So, in being a woman, try to be um, independent, try to be educated. Now, when I say educated, that clicks another spot in my professionalism. How many of you go off to college really probably intend to graduate, you have a major, and suddenly your little heart goes pitter-patter when you're a sophomore, and uh, this guy says, oh, I'll take care of you, I've, I've got an engineering major, I'm going to make big money, you don't need to work. Now here comes the Mormon philosophy. You're supposed to be at home, a home uh, at-home mother, pregnant and barefooted. You don't know anything, you're nothing but a baby machine. And he's, he says this between the lines, watch their lips but then look at their behavior and you will find that um, he will ask you to leave college suddenly you're a sophomore and you're doing pretty good you have B plus A minus average good uh, potential to have a good job and you quit to have a baby for him now there's always the fantasy oh I'm gonna go back I'm gonna go back I'm going to finish, and of course BYU uh, Independent Study says, oh, come with us, we'll get your degree for you, and some do, most don't. So you quit college, and um, you have two or three babies, he graduates, now you're you know, 27, 28 years old, and going into your 30s, and uh, he goes out and gets his first job, and you know, never pays that much, and it's hard to live on that amount, and of course now you're giving 10% to the Mormon Church, so you're living on 90% of your income. And lo and behold, um, as the kids kind of get older and independent, um, you start to have your boobs hanging down to your knees and your ass, uh, too much trunk, uh, junk in the trunk, and suddenly he's looking down the road and he's seeing these 20-year-old uh, girls, and now you're 33 or 37, and uh, he's kind of noticing those girls. Well, now he's got a good job. You have a nice house and you have a, a big car. and. Uh, you know, you need a crane to get into the uh, minivan for the soccer for the kids, but, you know, you're married for eternity, and he promised, he raised both hands to the square and promised, uh, you know, that he's going to marry you and be with you forever, and he's not. You find out he has an affair, or he has another interest, and then now what do you got? You got four little kids, I'm exaggerating now, under five, but certainly under ten, and no education. No job experience, no savings, no 401k, no stock plan. He has all of that. Oh, it's going to be okay because I'll get child support. Well, you better get out of that great big fancy house because it ain't going to be that way anymore. It's going to be an apartment somewhere, two bedroom with two kids and bunk beds on each floor. And then uh, you're going to be working uh, part-time in McDonald's or Walmart and uh, suddenly you're paying for babysitting expenses that you didn't think were going to be three or two or three hundred dollars a week. Uh, one baby's about what now, it's nighttime, 2011, uh, 110 a week. 
two or three, four, I don't know what it would be. But now you don't even have your children for yourself to raise and no education. And you gave him all the best years of your life. There's nothing wrong with saying that. It's true. And uh, you gave him uh, the babies, and that makes his kingdom grow and grow. And the church believes in polygamy, so he can just go and get what's called a divorce clearance from the Mormon church. He doesn't need to get... There's no such thing as a... Um, a temple divorce. There's no such thing as a temple divorce. There's a cancellation of the ceiling or a divorce clearance. Well, all he needs is a divorce clearance because the Mormon church is polygamous. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you've been told. Go look on the internet. Go talk to a state president or a general authority and find out if your divorced husband only needs a temple uh, clearance. And if he has a temple clearance, he can marry as many women as he wants. And let's take a look at your status. The second class citizen in the Mormon church. You go to the general authorities and say, well, you know, I'd like to, um, I'd like to get remarried again. I found this nice guy that wants to marry me. And they'll say, oh, you need uh, a cancellation of the ceiling. Oh, my God, now look at the paperwork. Look at the time. And, boy, you better have a guy that really wants to love you and wait for you and go through the uh, process of um, you have to write to your ex-husband who screwed you uh, literally and figuratively and have to ask him the bishop writes the letter is there anything that he wants to say or do that stops you from marrying again gee I, w I wonder who has the power in the Mormon church is it the females or is it the male is it the priesthood or is it no priesthood so he can write back and say, oh, she had adultery, she, you know, she hates the Mormon church, this, that. Now that's just going to complicate um, your cancellation of the ceiling. And of course, the only people now that basically have to uh, get cancellation of the ceilings is the female. The male can be polygamous and marry over and over and over. Gee, is, is that a surprise to you? And believe me, if it is, you're dumb. You're dumb, and you're going to be heading down a road that you need to get on the Internet, you need to talk to your authorities, take a look in the bishop's handbook, and find out you are a second-class citizen. You shouldn't be. Don't be. Use your common sense. Use your resources for research. Don't listen to what they say, but look at what they do. Why are the women in Utah so happy? Well, I guess they're because they're the largest addicted group to antidepressants in the United States. I am a happy Molly Mormon. Well, here, give me some more Prozac, give me some more Adamant, bring that stuff on. Look at what they do, not at what they say. Look at the women in the Mormon church. You know, they're 290 or 370 pounds and, and uh, they're unhappy, they're popping drugs, they're screaming at kids, they're running with diapers. Uh, they're trying to push strollers, but they don't have enough energy to push them unless they're in their early 20s. And uh, then take a look at the obesity statistics. Why is Utah third in all 50 states for chubby fat people? Well, you figure it out. If they're really happy with the Mormon church and they're happy, 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 and their life is good, 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 why are they eating themselves to death? There are many other, uh, bankruptcy uh, is another high, Utah is I, somewhere in the top 10, maybe the top 5, for bankruptcies. Scams, Ponzi deals, your husband's going to say, oh, we're going to sell Amway. I don't want to work, I've been a return missionary and I've been in a suit for two years and I'll be damned if I'm going to go out there and get dirty and, and go get a real job. I'm going to sit here on the phone like I did as a missionary and sell Scamway. Uh, and sell pyramid programs and Ponzi schemes. Eh, probably works for two or three years and he goes to Point of the Mountain Prison. Now what do you got? No job, four little kids and uh, you know welfare and food stamps. So if you get yourself into those situations don't say you know David never said anything. I said yeah I did. I put out two videos and two tapes to give fair warning to females in the Mormon church that there's a good chance you're going to get screwed unless you're smart and you get, uh, you know, prenuptial agreements, you get um, equality, and you can stand up and uh, speak for yourself. And uh, the Mormon church always says the man has the last say, because he's the priesthood holder. Who made that rule up? The priesthood holders? Yeah. 
why can't the woman have the last say? And you know what? We can't afford this. You're not buying another gun that you don't even hunt. You just hang it on the wall. We need to buy um, some uh, dental work for the kids. Why can't the woman go, hey, no, watch. You're going to have to train yourself as a Mormon woman to, to say no. And if he doesn't like it, that's tough. Sometimes you come to agreement mutually and equally. There's nothing wrong with that. And if you want to say at this particular time, I got to let him buy a gun, I don't care, we have enough money, that's fine too. But don't be afraid to stand up for yourself and go, no, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not into this, I'm not going to do it, we're not trading this car this year, we're going to lose our ass again, we're not going to do it. That's my vote and uh, it takes a majority vote. And the best you're going to be able to do is have a tie. And uh, the women uh, can break the tie. So. You decide how you want to put it together. If you want the Mormon church to run your life, run your vagina, run your, your uh, marriage, run your children, be my guest. It wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. As a male, um, I didn't want the Mormon church anymore having me rule uh, over my wives. Um, I've learned today my wives are equal, maybe more than equal. Their name is on the house. They own the house. They have two new cars. They, uh, that are in their names. They have their job and their money. And certainly we consult together to raise the family and the kids, but um, if she wants to say no, she can say no, and I genuinely respect that. I didn't used to. It's taken me this long to, to figure this out. So talk to the people that you're thinking of dating and marrying. Know them well. Look at their family date for a while and get in situations where he gets angry or he gets upset and see how he treats you. And then use your damn common sense. Don't use your heart and don't use your, oh, he's so wonderful. You know, he, he may not be. He could be. And if he is, grab him. Man, grab him because good men are hard to find. That's true. I'm ashamed to say that, but it's the truth. So if you have a miserable life, it's your fault. If you have a good life, it's your fault again. So make good choices and be careful of the Mormon doctrine and the Mormon uh, cult and the Mormon um, power. Power, power, power. Don't let them have power over you, your sexuality, and your life. Thank you very much.